Bond fans have been around for quite a few years and you'd have thought that the press would have got used to them by now. However, Frank and Dave from the band say they're still labelled as odd, which is a term they can't quite understand. I think we're pretty normal. Yeah, I think we're pretty normal. Normal chap is. More normal than most pop musicians, I'd have thought. I, don't I think maybe it comes down to not having an image and uh, so they can't say you're that type of band or this type of band. Yeah, you're form. weird if you look normal, just because like, everyone else in pop music is trying to look weird. So if you stick out like a sore thumb if like, you don't brush your teeth three times a day and have them capped. And wear trendy clothes or whatever. Yeah. So, I would just into the music, I suppose. No. There's certainly, yeah, there's certainly a lot in what you say there, but there must be people, right, who are writing these reviews You've never even seen you. No, and still, true. they say you're out on your own. What's going yeah. on? It must be the music, but I don't see that it's that, that hard to grasp, really. It's harder to grasp than um, Kylie or someone, but it's not, you know, some, there's verses and choruses and there's um, catchy bits and weird bits. Yeah, we do the old catchy chorus now and again. I think you can't really say things to people that much these days. I think because the music says something to people, they maybe think we're out on a limb, because, like, unless you're, like, sort of, you've got a huge banner and you're saying something that's acceptable to people. I think you look, well, you look weird if you're um, using it as this kind of like a soapbox for opinions and ideas. So I suppose that's another reason people maybe can't grasp this. I don't know what's wrong with journalists, like they should have been used to listening to that, that sort of music for years, I would have thought. But yeah, I suppose if they say we're out on the limb, we must be. Influences, not, not wanting to have a nine-to-five job. Yeah. Being, being very lazy, not wanting to work. The biggest influence is trying to avoid sports at school. Like, the only way to get out of it is they let, go and let you play guitars in the music room. So, like, if you didn't want to, like, run around trying to compete with people, you could go to the music room and sneer at people. <laughs> and, like, staying in the, staying in the um, cold weather and watch them all get covered in mud and laugh at them and get beaten up by them. <laughs> <laughs> and what happens ten years later? You're doing this thing, you're making records that people, you hope, will get something out of. Mm -hmm. And there's a bunch of goons sitting there watching your every move, assuming that you're competing with everybody else. Doesn't that annoy you, this idea of bands all competing and struggling over each other? Um, I'd, I'd like to think, if I hear a good record and we haven't made one as good as that, I'd like to think that's, that's the sort of competition I'm into, that you want to make one as good as that, but different mm. kind of thing. I'm into that sort of competition. I'm not into this kind of, like, um, seems to be that if bands want to get somewhere, they'll, like, do anything. They'll crawl on their hands and knees and lick and kiss various things and then <laughs> <laughs> just do anything to get anywhere. I'm not really, I've got too much self-respect for that really. It seems to be, I mean, People especially... People I've liked in the past have had self-respect as well, you know, I'm into self-respecting music really. Of course, and I mean, especially with a band... It has an integrity of its own, like, you know, you can tell by listening to a record whether someone's got integrity or not, like, you know, whether yeah. they've got something other than just wanting to be famous, like, you know. Mm. Of course, and with a band like yours where the music is obviously designed to have integrity and where the words especially are condemning a society in which people are crawling all over each other and fighting to yes, get to the top. It would be ridiculous for you guys to get involved in something like that. Mm. Mm. You know, I, I, I agree that Charles Darwin was right, but I don't agree with the survival of the fittest, you know. I think you should conquer it. Yeah, um, it's the single is Happy Shopper. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I gather that the Happy Shopper chain aren't too pleased about it. And they're threatening no, all kinds of legal stuff. Apparently the managing director of Happy, Happy Shopper walked into an hour price shop somewhere in West London and bought this record and then when he listened to it and having viewed the cover and listened to the record he decided it was defa defamatory to the, me to the image of um, Happy Shopper products which is um, not really true like really. I mean, the cover was obviously a piss take like, you know, but the song is not about them at all really it's just like it's just a song about consumerism and how like, people are, how people are um, almost forced to like rush by things and when they get them home it doesn't make them happy at all like, you know? mm. and that's, that's what the song's about and it's just called Happy Shopper out of irony and then like uh, some bright spark in the band had an idea about um, why, why not, why not, the product. <laughs> yes, why not model, model the record exactly the same way as the Happy Shopper Muesli packet. <laughs> so, <laughs> so we did that and um, apparently um, lawyers have been in contact with our record company. Uh, so it might be withdrawn, so stock up now. <laughs> buy your Happy Go shoppers. out and buy it, kids. <laughs> Yeah. 
to be inspired by happiness. Happiness just makes you feel good. You know, um, depression and that sadness like makes you feel like you want to do something about it or you want to wallow in it one or the other. I wouldn't really that pleased. You, you tend not to be pleased with the work you've done like six months earlier. So, so, so if I put the list lyrics on the sleeves, it'd kind of be a constant reminder of what I was doing, like, you know, as, as the time went on a year ago or two years ago, whatever, like. So I prefer not to do it now. It's for have selfishness, really. Like, fans always write and ask for, like, the lyrics and stuff. But, um, which I, I'm glad, I'll gladly send them by post, which we should be doing, like, a lyric book, like, to send out soon for people who write to us. But, um, actually having them on the sleeves is a bit, sort of, it destroys, like, the interest in it anyway. It's, it's sort of, um, if you put a record on, the lyrics in front of you, the music's in front of you, it means you mm. can't really glean that much from it. It doesn't make you think at all, sort of thing. It doesn't, um, like an active consumer rather than the passive one.